Welcome back to episode two, everybody. Hope you enjoyed episode one. If you didn't enjoy episode one, go watch that shit right now. Yeah. <laughs> if you right. didn't enjoy it, watch it again because you should have Watch it, it until you enjoy it because I know you're going to enjoy it <laughs> because you have my soothing voice. We should, yo, we should do a whole ASMR. Yeah, it's, can you hear some whispers? I feel like every yeah, podcast yeah. does that. They, they're doing ASMR. ASMR. Do they? Is that a thing? I don't know. Oh, I don't, I don't watch first. enough podcasts. All right. So this week's topic is... um. We're gonna talk about a lot of things. Yeah. But but primarily I would imagine we're gonna talk a little bit more about networking, because I know we touched on it last episode. Mm-hmm. We're gonna talk a little mm-hmm. bit more about um mm-hmm. you know, just how you wanna represent yourself as an artist, producer, or whatever videographer. Yeah, whatever you are. For Even sure. and, and that's the thing, because I think this could be so applicable for so many realms of, you know, craftsmanship. It's like I, I I've talked about this before where it's like I almost feel like sometimes I'm like a like a tattoo artist because it's like you know it's like people go through internships and in, you know audio they go through mm-hmm. it's like your mm-hmm. apprenticeship for yeah. being a tattoo artist right. and, um you know and we we're talking about you know how sometimes you have to do things for free because it's yeah. a portfolio piece right. or it's you know that's it, another really important part of this I right, think too is building that catalog like how you can while you're networking you know exactly what kind of catalog should you be building yeah. with the projects you're taking on through those experiences and whatnot, how to put together something that really represents you. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're starting off, like when you're first starting off, I feel like a lot of people don't, they don't know what to do. So they seek out guidance and a lot of people just kind of give you a broad, like, Oh, you got to do this and that and this and that. And then people don't really explain how to do that. And it's like, people are just left lost. Like, what the fuck do I do? Yeah. Yeah. How do I go? Like, how did, how did, like, I feel like that's and I think that's know. the thing is a lot of people have done a lot of trial and error yeah. and that's how they figured it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So well, let's start it off with you Nick then. So when we talk about networking here, I mean maybe we should start then with your backstory. So can you think of when you were first starting out, what kind of networking were you doing? You know, we don't got to talk about right now just yet, but what kind of network did you start out with? What was your game plan? Um in terms of getting your message out there, getting you, you know, what you were doing out there, everything like that. When I first actually like found out that I didn't even really know what, you know, I know people recorded in a studio, like in a live band sense, or Mm -hmm. say you're, you know, just a recording band, not even just live, but just like you're a recording band, you know, you have guitars, drums, all this kind of stuff. And I knew you recorded into the software. First one I was familiar with, was Pro Tools when I was, you know, in a band when I was, like, 16, 17. And um, that was kind of, like, I had an idea mm-hmm. of what it was, but I didn't really know anything. Yeah. So when I um, I actually, like, I got to meet, um, you know, a producer, and that's actually how I got started. And Octavius, Octavius, he's, um, you know, right next door to us in you know, behind the studio me. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah so behind he, Rob over here. We work, you know, next to each other. And he's actually the one who got me started. He got me, you know, learning Logic, which is, a, you know, a separate, you know, workstation software. Mm-hmm. And um, that, and I kind of started because I was like, yo, what he does is cool. Like, you know, it wasn't just, you know, because before when I was in a band, it was like, we're recording, we're taking, you know, it very seriously, we're doing, and there's nothing wrong with taking it seriously. But like, I loved how Octavius, you know, made it fun, made right. it like, Oh, it's like felt like magic or felt like, you know, but also at the same time felt like something you could do. Yeah. And I was like, I want to learn how to do that because I want to make music, you know, and because I love listening to music. So and you kind of found a mentor that gave you the right creative inspiration to actually pursue the craft is what you're saying. Yeah. And and whether he did that knowingly or not, like he kind of did it unknowingly yeah. because it's just like. It just, you see someone doing it and naturally when you think something like that's cool and it feels good and you're like, oh, it gives you that kind of like, I can do that. And yeah. anything that you think you can do, you definitely can do. Yeah. Like no doubt. And so that was like my first, and I didn't even like meet Octavius. I'd actually heard of him more times than I, before than I had even met him. So like I had heard of him multiple times. I was like given um, like beginner, beginner guitar lessons. Um, and I had heard of him through, um, somebody else who was, um, there and they had recorded with him and also someone who I was going to, uh, community college with at the time had 
their daughter and she had also recorded with him so he had a good reputation and like that's like the kind of thing that comes with networking is you tend to have you know your reputation is number one that's how people hear about you mm -hmm. so then say uh I, I, re I very much so agree that the first person you should look to in any craft really is somebody who inspires you and is also good enough at it to really teach you what you need to know. I totally yeah. agree. But maybe how did you, how did this end up happening? That's what I'm wondering, even though I kind of know how it ended up happening for everybody watching. <laughs> yeah. Like if you're a, if you're a new producer, you, you want to find a mentor who creatively inspires you. But that's kind of like saying, oh, well, like if you need money, just just go find money. Like, yeah. like you know what I mean? How, how What was the the first step in actually putting yourself in a position to find someone to mentor you is, is what I would say. Cause that's the first step in networking. If you're just starting out would be who, how do you get to that first person who you can, you know, connect and learn yeah. from? Well, once I had finally gotten to meet him, I got to meet him because I had a friend who was doing a, he, he was a rapper and he wanted to work with Octavius. And so that was kind of like, yeah, dude, like I know this guy that I've only heard about. And I said, you know, you should work with him. You know, me knowing nothing of the person, yeah. just good things because, you know, that's the reputation he had. So I trusted that reputation. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I brought, you know, him to meet him and I in turn had also met Octavia. So yeah. it worked out in that way. I recorded guitar on some tracks and basically from there I'd been like, hey man, are you looking for somebody to like, you know, have intern here? Like I would intern for you like to learn and to you know work and stuff and that's just kind of how it started so you know what would you say your skill level was like when you first started seeking out someone to to teach you did you really know almost nothing at all about music or was this at a point where you would come to understand the basics but you needed someone to take you from this being a hobby to someone showing you the actual professional world of it yeah i mean What's funny was when I was like 16 or 17 in a band, I had nothing, I didn't want anything to do with recording. I thought it was something I couldn't learn. I thought it was super complex. Yeah. Something like that black magic isn't something. worth learning because it's so complicated. Mm -hmm. And that was such a stupid mindset to have because when I realized, you know, just how much there is to learn in different genres and different, you know, aspects and it, it really is just something anyone can learn how to do if they have the desire to do it. And being having someone to, you know, teach me some basics and make me feel comfortable was the thing that kind of inspired me. Because if it was like I was never really like pushed to do it because I, I guess I also didn't really show interest. Like I had said, I, I had no interest. So there was nobody really pushing me. It just happened when I was recording for this um, friend of mine who was, you know, doing a doing a record with him. So that's cool. It just kind of happened because you had interest in the same things. Your paths yeah. crossed. You met up somewhere. I, I, I don't think that that's too different for most people. I yeah. think most of the time the common interests will intersect. Right. What about you? What about you, Rob? What about me? Yeah. Let's get into you. Well, that's... what was your, so I'll ask a more specific question. All right, than that. Cool. When you first started cinematography, you probably were doing most of it yourself as you still do most of it yourself. Yeah. What would you, so your networking, I guess, would be more along the lines of finding people who need to have something photographed or something mm -hmm. that they want to be put into some type of cinematic. So right. your networking is a little different from Nick. Nick was more finding a mentor, finding somebody to teach him. Yeah. But I've known you a long time, and I don't remember. I've never had a mentor. Yeah, I've never, I don't, I've never had yeah. anyone teach me anything. I pretty much taught myself everything, either just by meddling around with shit myself and figuring it out, or YouTube, literally. Mm -hmm. So I feel like maybe a mentor could have been good, because I could have learned things faster and learned different aspects of things, mm -hmm. like maybe more like from the business side of things or like anything. I, I could have you know, probably learned faster from a mentor, so a mentor probably would be a good thing, but I never had that, so... Actually, to, to add on to that, like, that's actually what I think, like, being older now, that's actually the only thing I think a mentor is good for, mm -hmm. is in the beginning, yeah. and when you're trying to learn a lot fast. Right. In any other way, I actually kind of wish I didn't lean so heavily on a mentor. Yeah, because once you lean so heavily on someone like that, it's like, they become your crutch, and you're asking them every little thing, like, oh, is this good enough, or should yeah, I do exactly. this and that, and you're not taking it into your own hands, and you're not using what they taught you, and learning and 
building more. So there's drawbacks, and then there's also benefits from it, I feel like. Do you but, guys feel like you went, you dove into that pitfall at some point of leaning heavily on a mentor? Do you think that that oh was... Oh, yeah, easy. Yeah. yeah, I've done that. I mean, because I've had so many like right. at this point. And, and not, like, many mentors. Like, I've probably only had, like, two or three really heavy mentors that have taught me, yeah. like, uh, just so much stuff. And, and I mean, and I think I just... I take inspiration from them now. Mm -hmm. So it's like, now it's like, I don't lean so heavily, but I still, it's like, it's almost like if they, if you knew who I learned from, you, you would see how how that, like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Uh Like it would be like, it would make perfect sense. So, right. Maybe they're a little more refined because they have so much time doing it, but you're no longer looking to figure out how to build your own style. You're just looking for their advice on like maybe the, the nitty gritty is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I think now it's more or less when I have, questions that i Mm. can no longer like that i can't find the answer for Mm -hmm. like because that was the thing it was like when i had a question i would just ask and there's nothing wrong with that no but i think showing that you are going to at least try to find the answer yourself first because if you do that it shows you know initiative and you're not wasting their time Mm -hmm. because i think that's you know, it's like they spent all this time teaching you things, right, yeah. and it's like, well, what good is that if you're still asking me questions that you could have just found the answer for and not wasting my time? Yeah. And I value other people's time. I value my time. And, you know, I want to make sure, like, hey, at least if I tried to find the answer and can't find it, then I ask. And right. then, it, you know, it, it's just a respect thing. At that mm-hmm. point. Yeah. So. I agree. Yeah. Shows initiative. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, nothing nothing wrong with a little initiative. No, you got to have a little initiative sometimes <laughs> to get some stuff done. You know? yeah, hell yeah. Some Absolutely. stuff. To, yeah, uh, to get everything stuff. done, you got to have that no, initiative. No, no, no. You got to be yeah. on that grind. You got to be on yeah. that 24-7 Gary that... V grind. No. Dude. <laughs> you mean the Sigma male grind. The stuff. Sigma male grind. The Chad thing, grind. Oh, dude. Yeah. Nah, dude. Hey, like, I don't know. Once, once you, once you learn what you have to learn, mm-hmm. you have to go off on your own. Right. And, yeah, and you're only going to keep getting better at it and you're only going to keep learning yeah. more and and in my short time of purely being on my own i think i've learned more than what i learned from you know yeah mentors so in your own words when would you guys say that a mentor is good for somebody watching this who's listening to this because you're almost going back and forth you've never had a mentor at all you've you're completely self-taught yeah. whereas you're saying that in the start yeah. for you you relied too heavily on a mentor so where would you guys where's your line in the sand where would you say having a mentor can really help you as opposed to uh, it being a crutch. Like what kind of person should be looking for a mentor in their networking journey? If you're just starting out, I feel like, because mm-hmm. eventually you're going to hit a threshold and you're going to either not need them anymore or you're just going to be expanding at a pace where you're just taking in so much stuff and learning on your own that you can kind of just go off and, and be yourself. And I feel like that's, that's a different point for everyone, and you'll you'll know when that point is yeah. for yourself. And and it and I never like to think that I don't need my mentor anymore. It's like I still think you know it's, and that's where like if we're talking about networking and just networking is essentially relationships. So like mm-hmm. you know even though I mentored you know for point. people, it's like I still see myself as like a peer. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like I see them. It's like whether or not they see me that way that doesn't matter to me. It's like, I see them as someone who, you know, I can learn from even still. Mm-hmm. And especially when I, you know, know I need the help and I have so much problems asking for help. Yeah. I hate asking for help. I hate it, but you have to be okay with that. Yeah. Even when you're like, yeah, you get to the threshold of where you think you don't need them anymore, right. but you still do. And you still need to have people to bounce ideas off of. And mm-hmm. Ultimately, that's why I say being a peer, it's like, say I do a mix and like, I actually literally just did this. Like I did this for Madison's mix. I went over to Tyler, who is also next door. And, uh, he, he, his studio is called tribal studios. And, you know, we all work up here in the same building, but we're all separate, which is cool. And we can still be peers. Like, right. There are things that like, you know, I know where maybe I fall short Mm -hmm. and I want to ask, you know, outside perspective. And Tyler was able to provide that for me for that mix. He told me, Hey man, I think this, that, and the other take notes, you know, you listen and there's like, 
there's no ego involved. It's right. awesome. It's like you're just able to get, you know, just this. And you want to make it the best for the artist as possible. So it sounds to me like you're saying, like, as you learn, your mentors become more like more experienced peers where you're not looking to them for uh, maybe all of the pieces, but you're looking at them more as somebody you can bounce your own ideas off of and get a yeah. a different but equally creative response. I, I think that's cool. I think that that's probably, at least to me, I, I'll be honest, I've never really had a mentor either. Pretty much everything I've ever learned, I learned from YouTube. YouTube's my, yeah. YouTube's my teacher. YouTube's, YouTube's my dad. Teacher. Hey, man, it's a lot there's, of there's, there's a lot of just information out there that's just free and v available to yeah. literally yeah. anyone. So you could literally learn anything from YouTube. It's I don't think people realize that how big of a networking tool YouTube actually is yeah. in the sense of like what you can learn from it. You can yeah. learn anything. You, any, literally, you could type it. You want to learn something? Type it in. There's 400 videos and you could learn literally, literally anything. They have courses. You could buy someone's course now. So many people have courses out there, which is yeah. another thing. You I should, don't like those. Well, but... because some of them are all rehashed, but some yeah. of them, yeah, some might of them actually help you. Yeah. But, and, that that actually brought up a separate thing, man. I had almost, I kind of lost it. But we were we were talking about what what did you say before the courses? Um, what do you mean? Oh, uh, you were talking about oh yeah. So like, you you guys learned from YouTube. Oh yeah. So yeah. it was like all right. For me, I know that that wasn't gonna be my quickest stream of because like yeah. I feel like you almost have to know how you learn best. Yeah. yeah. So it's like for me, I know. That YouTube for me wasn't the quickest path. Right. So I knew the quickest path immediately, like from the get go, was mm -hmm. okay. I gotta learn from someone because I I learn better. You're from, a visual learner. I am a visual learner, but I'm also a by doing like touch yeah, yeah, and like, actually feel learner. Doing it, yeah. Yeah, it's like so I knew watching a video wasn't gonna also help me, and also like it it can help you, but what yeah. you're also hearing through a YouTube video, say say you're learning. <laughs> <laughs> so you're learning how to like do a mix, right? Mm -hmm. What you're hearing yeah, on your phone isn't. or yeah. even just like through a computer speakers, like you're like, I don't know exactly what they did there with that deesser or, or that, you yeah. know, bass thing. Because like, they don't break it down to the very nitty gritty of no, every no, single No, no, not even thing. that. It's an actual audio thing. It's right. an audio problem because it's YouTube like... YouTube compresses it. <laughs> yeah, or you're watching right, a video right. and you're like, well, I don't exactly get what happened there because... Mm -hmm. it, but when you're in the room and learning how, like, take, for example, like a DSer works, mm. you're going to hear, like, clearly in the room, because you're in there with your human ears, with yeah. physical monitors, what you're hearing. So that's why when you're doing something like that, that's why audio is kind of like an apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. And, like, being a tattoo artist is because, mm -hmm. you know, you can watch a video on how to tattoo people. Yeah, you can, that's just, yeah. You can practice on dummies all you want. But until you're working on, you know, the real thing in person, yeah, it's invaluable. Like, right. that kind of teaching is the most, that's how I knew immediately. Like, that's how I was going to learn best. Yeah. Because you've got a guy that's been doing it for maybe 20 years, and he, he like, knows what he's yeah. doing. He's been through all the, he's been, he's been in your shoes before. Exactly. Yeah. So, would you say that, that was the biggest first step for you, was finding somebody who could really not only show you, or not, not only... Maybe not show you, what would the word be? Not only give you lessons on what to do, but give you real feedback on what you were doing yeah. and give you, you know, concise, constructive criticism on it. Would you say, so actually I have an even better question. You got, say you have a, a new, a new producer, somebody who's very new to this, hasn't done it professionally whatsoever in the sense for other people. Would you recommend that their first step be seek out somebody who can teach them or to spend their time learning from their own resources and when they feel they have a decent grasp then go find someone to teach them which one do you think would would benefit them more depends on what you're trying to do if you're an artist specifically and, for production okay. okay specifically for production if you're doing it for production yeah learn from a producer so that should be the biggest first step you would say in their networking journey would be go find somebody who's willing to teach you or you know learn what you can by yourself and then find one mm -hmm. or you know, you don't even have to if you're trying to have a production style that is unlike anything that's ever been yeah. out. So because you don't need one. Everybody yeah. thinks you need you don't, one. No, you, you don't, don't need one. You don't I never had one, so yeah. and I'm doing all right, I guess. Yeah. I mean yeah. like there are people <laughs> who have been in your shoes who are farther, you know, like yeah. up in like, you know, who they work for, like say they work for a uh, you know, a big production company or whatever. Yeah. And it's like 
a lot of those people didn't go to college for it. They didn't, you know, they learned a lot on their own. So in that sense, a network and just not just mentors, but a network and peers and a network. And because I, I feel like that's how you'll even learn better than just a mentor is through peers and yeah. through trial and error. Other people that are at your level, above your level, or even below your level, you could always learn oh, something yeah. from somebody. Yeah. You can always yeah. learn something. Always. Which step, though, this is what I'm asking is, if you are brand new, which step would you say is most important to find somebody who can mentor you or to learn as much as you can before that? If you are brand new, if you if this is something you've just decided on, do you think it would be a quicker route to getting there? Like, we're talking about networking in yeah. the sense of where you start your networking journey. And to me, I started it on, like I said, YouTube. Every, yeah. YouTube taught me pretty much everything. But We do live in the age of the internet, and that's the thing with our generation, is we are learning most of our stuff through whether it's YouTube or just the internet in general. That, I think, since we have that now, why not use it? Right. Everybody hates the internet. Everybody... You know, yeah, but it's say, just expanding. We got the metaverse now. But now I gotta ask, yeah. bro. No, yeah. yeah, why not use it? Because like, you know, they'll teach you stuff that you know maybe someone won't teach you. Yeah. So. Well, you you're talking about having a mentor, at first, and YouTube too. I guess I guess what I'm getting at here is if somebody's watching this and they want to take away where what should their first step be in your opinion as a producer, someone who's walked the shoes. Do you think it would be more valuable for them to spend that time learning the basics on YouTube? or whatever medium, or do you think yeah. they should seek out somebody to teach them in person? Learn the basics on YouTube or the internet. Okay. Because, like, I, and, because if you can't find a, a mentor, you're going to stress yourself out, like, oh, yeah, I need a mentor, I need not, this, yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I can see that. You're not going to, and not everybody has that. Yeah, so no, it's like, it's almost, gonna give it's you almost like you don't need an answer for that. It's just kind of like, well, everybody has a computer, almost everybody has a computer, you or a cell phone. phone. Yeah, or a cell phone. And it's just like, well, might as well start. Yeah. Like, you gotta start. You can start at any time. You don't have time to wait. your phone right now. You don't, find nobody's something. coming to your rescue. Like, that's it. Like, yeah. Nobody's coming. That's just, a good point yeah. to have, too, that, like, the longer you wait, the harder it's going to get. The mm -hmm. harder it's going to get just, to start. You're just wasting your time. And, and I had no intention of wasting time, which was why, you know, I knew how I learned better quicker. So that's why I took that route, you know, right away. Because it was like, all right, I want to learn a lot really fast. And I yeah. have the opportunity to do it with people who are around. And that was why I did it. And, I mean, I didn't need to do that, but I did that. I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, <laughs> dude. No, that's good. So then, I guess, counterpositionally to that, Rob. Yes. You're somebody who had absolutely nobody to teach him the basics. You learned everything yourself. Pretty now, much, yeah. I, I know it's going to be hard for you to speculate on when you should have a mentor, but in the field of cinematography and videography, do you think you would have gotten further had you had someone there? Or do you think that would have just limited you in building your own style to get to where you're at now? If you had somebody dictating to you the correct way to do things? I, I think, it, it, I think it could help in like certain aspects of things to like teach me certain things. But like, I feel like that maybe if I did have a mentor, I'd be, I'd be learning everything from them and their style and how they do it. And then I would have, simultaneously adopt that style and not find my own style because i feel gotcha. like with video and photo and anything like that everyone has their own unique style everyone shoots things differently everything like everyone likes certain angles certain whatever it doesn't matter what it yeah. is but everyone has their own unique style and i feel like that's like even if you have a mentor maybe they're teaching you the basics they're teaching you how to you know like pretty much cut and dry like you know yeah what, what you need to know here's what you need to know this. how to operate the camera yeah like other. shit like that and then, like, even, like, lighting, like, lighting, I, I had to, I figured all this out on my own through YouTube and just trial and error how to light things. Like, that's, that's important because everything goes into it. Like, you might have the camera and the lens and you can shoot stuff, but lighting is a valuable part. And it took me a while to learn lighting and how to, I still don't even know that much about lighting. That's something I need to this learn is, a lot about. But that's something and, I think people won't admit, though. Yeah. Like, even people who are top of their game, they're, like, world class. They're, like, you know, they... They don't want to admit that sometimes they don't know stuff. Either. Yeah. Like, as much as, like, they're, like, you know, they it's almost an illusion of just, like, yeah. I know all this. And, and don't get me wrong. They know a ton of stuff. Right, right. But, like, some things just happen based on, you know, happenstance. Right. Like, it's, like, it just, things just somehow worked. Things just pan out sometimes. Like, I had to learn, uh, like, I taught myself color grading. It's completely, like... 
What do you mean? You use that saturation slider? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never use a saturation slider. That shit's terrible. Your image is gonna look washed out and just fucked. But just know that if you don't use one, you're gonna get roasted by people in the comments <laughs> telling you that you should have used one and saved yourself the time. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's like a whole different ball game because like there's so many elements to it because it's like you got you, maybe you got the video down, you got all that stuff down, but now you gotta color grading and color correction. That's a whole. It's a whole other yeah. department that you have to learn. Oh, so I'm, I'm sure like, there's so many skills that go it's a whole, into it. It's, it's a whole, there's so many different elements that go together. And that's why on big productions, you have a guy that's just the cinematographer doing that. And you have a whole department that is just the lighting. You yeah. have people that are just gaffers. You have people that are just, you have a guy that's doing the color. Like maybe I shot it and it goes off to an editor. He just edits the whole thing. And then it would go off to a colorist and they're the ones that are coloring the video. But for me, it's like, I don't know anyone that does, I don't know anyone that does this shit. I, yeah, I had to learn it all myself, and I'm still learning shit. So that's interesting, then. So then, what? We, so Nick said his first networking step was he came here, you started recording some guitar for uh, for a buddy, you said right mm -hmm. for his music, and from there it just kind of you met somebody who inspired you to start making it, and he was willing to help. So that's awesome. I mean, that's yeah. that's fucking I mean, great. But I was lucky to have that. Yeah, like I was that, gonna say yeah. that's like a, that's like a luck and out that's type like situation. What a lot of, yeah, that's like what a lot of people, especially who know me around here, they're like they see that that i was able to learn quick because i had that yeah and and i don't want people to ever be jealous of that like it's, uh, i don't think you can help that i think people will be regardless people will always but, be jealous of things yeah it but like what it is but i don't want them to think that just because i had that 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 was the only reason why i'm where right, I'm at. right. and, oh, and yeah. i mean yeah it kind of is but like at the same time it's also like well i would have kept trying anyway yeah you know well, what i mean it's like if somebody spent years trying to paint like you know, a beautiful painting and someone told them, oh, you're just so talented. Like, it just comes to you naturally. It's like, no, no, I spent years, like, trying yeah, to do yeah, like, this. I've been like, doing this for 10 years. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And there are people where it comes super easy and, you know, good for them, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. there are people who make me, like, I look at that and they, you know, they're fresh off. I'm like, man, I want to quit. <laughs> no, but like, you know what I mean? It's just like, it, it's awesome, though. And, and just know that just because you see that, don't, don't let that take away from your value. Your right. value is still, it's valid. It doesn't need, you don't need validation for that. You are, you know, you have your own thing that you bring to the table. It's just figuring out what that is. Right. Uh, that's a great point. Yeah. So then what is it like starting out networking when you don't have that kind of pillar around you, somebody who you can ask questions, somebody who can lie back on you. What does that first step of networking look like when it's all you, when, you ha when you've never had somebody there to direct you? Well, for me, it wasn't like networking and like trying to find other photographers, videographers, whatever that I could, I could learn from. What I was doing was like finding like artists and finding people that were um, in the music industry that I could, you know, build relationships with to you know form like you know i guess clients or whatever like yeah. someone that wants that actual music yeah. video like i had to get myself out there and get known as a videographer as a photographer because like like this you know let's say like maybe almost a year now i've been trying like like you know kind of getting into this maybe not even it's not even been a year yet but like the the first like i'd say like networking opportunities when i went to jacksonville and okay. I met all these different creative people, all these artists, all, like photographers were there, video people were there, and you meet all these different people, and it was like this whole new world I was introduced into. Yeah. And it's like, uh, and you're like a, a music video came out of that. A lot of two music videos came yeah. out of that because I shot one when I was there for somebody, and then I met a guy that was there that um, a few months later, coming you know back to Jersey, he's also from Jersey, and he was yeah. down there. He hit me up for a video, so it, it that's that's how that kind of worked out with networking at least for me it wasn't yeah. like trying to find other people that i could um grow off of like you know, yeah photography wise or whatever it, it was, was like, finding people who actually needed your who skill needed my set. service or, or whatever you know people that i could you know further my career i guess you could say okay so that that was almost a little more organic in, in the sense yeah. that you really didn't and it have wasn't any even what i system. was going down there for... <laughs> it wasn't no. even it, it, and it's crazy because it was like never my intention any of this was never uh, my intention but it's just panned out that way and now i'm on this path of music videos and whatnot and it was never like my intention to like fall into this but it just yeah. kind of happened that way like i shot a music video for somebody they introduced me to somebody else 
and then it went off on this train of now I'm in Jacksonville meeting all these people and now I'm doing this and now I'm kind of like now I'm going to these clubs and shooting these videos here and now I'm going crazy and we went to LA and it's yeah. like meeting the TikTok people and shooting videos for TikTok people and like just where I am That's now dope, but like... it's like it's crazy how it all happened and it happened in such like a like it just kind of yeah. boom it like just happened year. and it was mm-hmm. like what's going on now like yeah. I had like a like a year ago was I Maybe it wasn't even barely touching my camera. wasn't doing anything. Yeah. And now I'm like trying to build like a, a business. Yeah, trying to keep up with how many yeah, things and like are I'm, on your like head. I'm thinking about starting like a second business because I want to have the video, like the the crew media as a separate thing for just music videos and uh, stuff like that, and then go off and do photography for weddings and shit as a yeah. separate thing, and like try and build all that. And now we got this podcast we're doing, and it's just like. And then my own personal YouTube channel that I want to bring back that I never post on. But yeah. It's so much It's so much stuff that's like stuff I've always wanted to do and it's like I never th- saw myself actually doing it and now that I'm actually doing it, it's like yeah, it's possible. You, you guys, it sounds like almost like you guys were in two different places when you started that journey because it sounds like from you that you already had quite a bit of camera experience just growing up, just growing up with well, a yeah, camera in I your was, hand. That's what I started with was shooting like like short films and stuff like yeah. that. That's what I started with. But then by the time you wanted to go professional, the issue wasn't I need to learn how to use a camera. It was how do I find people who I can actually market this to. Yeah. Whereas for you, when you started that journey, you had no idea you even wanted to do recording and, and engineering and, yeah. and production. So for, mm-hmm. for you, it was more of like a you almost needed that mentor because right. you weren't. I didn't, didn't know what I wanted doing to it. do. Yeah. It was just kind of like, I mean, I knew I wanted to make music for myself, and yeah. I still do. And it's just like, I think it's actually helped me so much to make music for other people. Because I also want to make music for myself. But because I started making music for other people, it actually kind of helped me make better music for myself. And it's because it's like, oh, I'm trying to figure out, you know, this artist and trying to get in their head and be like, okay, how, how is it that you want to sound and portray uh, yourself? And that kind of made me think a lot about how I wanted to do it. Yeah. So it's like like people who are like journalists, you know, they, they go and they do all these, you know, interviews and stuff with people, and they kind of think about like, man, like they, they start to get their, you know, their questions answered, and then, you know, they go and then, you know, say that journalist is also an artist, then they're like, okay, no. I know what I want to do. It's just yeah. it's just getting information and that's, you know, something with the internet that's, you know, allowed that it's to happen. There. Oh so. yeah. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier how the internet right. is like raising kids anymore to learn stuff pretty with, much. Yeah, iPad kids have kids. a phone at, kids have a phone at 3. I know, dude. iPads. Yeah, it's dude. fucking crazy. iPad dude. babies. It's crazy. <laughs> so then guy go ahead. Go ahead. Wow. No, no, I was just, I was like I don't know if I love that, but <laughs> Yeah, no. You know. Now my fucking my nephews, dude, they're like they're six and seven or seven and eight mm. and every time they come over dude they know how to use my computer they know how to play video <laughs> games on my computer i'm like yo that's I, incredible i'm like he's yo like a, i do a not know champ in rocket league. yeah dude yeah but my nephew's like top five in the world rocket league they're gonna have little mini like corsair keyboards yeah, yeah. yeah. Fingers <laughs> small stretch thing. across because that was like i remember watching you know my dad like play like wolfenstein on the computer oh, yeah. and i was like and i could never play it because the the stretching of the fingers and just yeah. the whole yeah. the whole thing skewed me out because right. i was only good with a controller because mm-hmm. i played like playstation but you know it, it's so funny i was like man one day they're gonna have to do that for oh, these yeah. kids like because they're just gonna be like ready yeah. to go at you know four years old like they're called phone keyboards now they play it all on their phone yeah <laughs> They have um, tablets like that where you can turn it into a keyboard and make oh, it yeah. you know, all that crazy mm-hmm. shit. That would be tremendous. We just thought of a revolutionary idea. <laughs> yeah, we're going to... Corsair, <laughs> where you at? Cors- yeah, this week's episode is sponsored by Corsair. <laughs> nah. <laughs> but this week's episode, not sponsored. <laughs> not sponsored at all because we're Because we're broke. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we're the worst podcast of all time. Yeah. yeah. Welcome like... back to the worst podcast <laughs> ever made. We it, hope and, you enjoyed it, it so far. And that's the thing. It's like, I think, I don't know, because that's what I want to be able to do. Like, I think, you know, we, we all agree. We talked about this but earlier, like we were talking mm-hmm. about, like it would be so cool to have an artist on to talk about, you know, just to get another perspective. Because if we can sit down and talk to them and hear their story and all that, maybe that inspires someone like how I was inspired by yeah. Octavius or, you know, whoever. And I mean, a lot of people don't get like 
people who know us, I feel like other outside of our like friends, you know, they don't get to see how we are when we chill and we're not just working. So yeah. I, I like being able to do, you know, just something where we can chill, have a couple beers, you know, just talk about what it is we like doing because that really is all we kind of talk about. Is yeah. What yeah. we what we enjoy and you know, oh, yeah. in in the sense of, you know, music and media. So yeah. Except social media. We hate social media. Yeah, bro. No, it's really <laughs> delete bad. your social. Delete really your social. Bad. So let me ask you, Rob. Well, actually, I asked both of you guys then, right? So a bit earlier in this in this podcast, we were talking about uh, first steps in networking. Nick, you were saying how you had a mentor and that mm-hmm. kind of guided you on this path. Rob, you were saying you didn't have a mentor, but you you know you were self taught, and by the time you wanted to do this professionally, mm-hmm. you had a pretty good understanding. So then, you know, you, you both are around the same page in terms of that. Now you're you're both looking for clients. You're both looking for people to connect with and you know make projects with. What would you guys say? We'll start over here with Rob. What would you say the biggest thing has been for you so far in that like ne- next step in networking past finding people to help teach you? What is that? What has been the biggest step for you coming out of the learning and more into the actual doing stage? I think the next step for me is learning a lot more about business and structure of that. Oh, okay. Because I might know how to do all the, you know, photography, whatever. I might know all, all of that and have that down pretty good, but being able to market yourself and do the business end of things is a whole nother ball game. Gotcha. And that's all fresh to me. So that's like something I'm, I'm still learning how to market myself, how to put myself out there. Like, you know, getting a website, business cards, you know, shit like that. Yeah. That, and and then even on social media, you got to market yourself on social media. So like you got to be on every platform to market yourself because you got to use Instagram, you got to use Facebook, you got to use YouTube, you got to use every tool at your disposal to try and get yourself out there. If you want to maximize it, yeah. Yeah. And it's, I think that's really important, especially in now's day and age. So that next networking step then for you, you say is like maximizing exposure, right, using yeah. every single tool available to try to get your, your name yeah. out there once you feel confident in your product. Yeah. Something like that. Just because it's like, especially coming from such a small, like reserve town in like yeah. the middle of fucking oh, God, yeah. nowhere. It's like, shout out. <laughs> Shout out! Yeah, it was good. Yeah. But it's like you know, there's not a lot around here, and there's not a lot of. I think there uh, is. You know, well, there, there, there is. Yeah. There's, a, there's so much talent around here, and that's the thing that makes me really like, really mad about shit is that there's so many people that I've met that are so talented, and what and whatever it is, whether they're a music artist, whether they're a producer, whether they're a photographer, there's so many people that have so much talent and so much potential to do shit, yeah. but they don't have, like, the opportunity to actually do that shit i think what people lost is trust and they lost um you know just not being afraid to just work with other people based yeah. on you know being somebody's you know being a peer being right. like someone like like i said i still hit people up about questions that i can't find answers to mm-hmm. or if I'm not doing something where I think it's not having the most impact, I will ask somebody, you know, what it is they can do or I can do to make it better. Right. And I think, you know, like I know you're talking about more exposure and stuff like that. Right. But I focused on that way too early. Yeah. I was trying to do all the social media stuff right out of the gate, trying to get people to come in. And I mean, yeah, yeah. it worked, but then I was making crap. I was making yeah. stuff that wasn't good even though I thought I was good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm not saying that that's the case for you, but what I'm saying is like, it's it's like I'm at this point now where mm-hmm. I think maybe I should be doing more of that, yeah. but I have such a distaste for yeah. the culture and right. social media yeah. that I don't want to do that. Right. And I would rather just people come here, record, we make the best thing possible, and then people hear about it. Yeah. And, gotcha. Or they talk about it. Or... You know, they yeah. just feel good. And that, to me, is worth it, you know? And it sells itself. I mean, if you're, yeah. do, if you're doing good work, that's just going to sell itself. Like, and I being mean, you, in you a, notice that, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, word of mouth is big. On, being like, in a small gigs, town. Whatever. Yeah, being in a small town in a small state. I mean, a lot of people in the state. But, like, yeah. not being, a lot of outlets. Yeah. No. Well, especially, like, in South Jersey, I feel like. Mm-hmm. it's more small down here than it is up it's very north. tight-knit yeah and i and i think you know music communities in general are very tight-knit but in new jersey mm-hmm. it's almost like everybody's out for themselves and yeah. not really you know 
and I mean there are teams. Yeah, whatever, but you yeah. know that they're out for themselves, and people are only part of the team right. because they think somebody can provide them with something that they can't get themselves. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's such a bad narrative. Yeah, well, that's like, why New to, Jersey hasn't really been on anything. That's why nothing happens in New Jersey. That's, every, yeah. So would you guys say that's one of the like? Because to be honest with you, I've done almost zero networking zero advertising for myself i've always been of the yeah, mind like likewise. you are yeah likewise that if it's good people will fuck with it if it's not people won't so in the sense of trying to get somewhere with that you know in in the professional world but would you guys say that's one of the biggest uh pitfalls then of your guys journey into this world is yeah journey into this world yeah we're getting deep <laughs> and philosophical here your, your journey into your you know chosen careers <laughs> yeah, bro, Brendan <laughs> Fraser. Yo, let's get Brendan <laughs> Fraser in here, bro. Yeah, can we share that picture of Brendan Fraser that I have on my Discord? <laughs> uh, oh, do you have it with the with the bloodshot eyes? Yeah, it's yeah. like an edited. It's so funny though. I love when yeah. I. Can we just put it right over Nick's face, like right now when he looks at the camera? <laughs> yeah, but it would just be like yeah. it's so funny because I I do this thing on because I, I like I said I have such a distaste for social media that I'll I'll literally post something like mm -hmm. that I. That's like pulling at me to, yeah. Cause all right, do do you keep a journal? I I do, yeah. But all right, I have a weird way of keeping a journal. Okay. I will make a story on Instagram, right, and I will type out what it is that is just pulling at me for some reason, and I'll just yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. type it out as if I'm gonna post it. Right. But then, I get to a point where I hate it. I'm yeah, like, I'm gonna yeah. put it in my journal because it makes me feel better. Mm -hmm. Well, whenever I get that extra itch. And I mm -hmm. hit post. Yeah, I will always like you put something ridiculous after yeah, it, like yeah, a, that yeah. picture of Brendan Fraser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, listen, I don't take myself that seriously, yeah. but I also like, it's like, but I want to share it, yeah. And, yeah. I, and it makes me feel better that I got it out, right? Without it coming across like too like, oh yes, I'm deadly serious. Exactly, and yeah. and that's the thing, and I am serious. It's mm -hmm. just like I just don't want people to think like, oh, I'm gonna do anything rash. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because yeah. I think people, and and that's what really comes down to it is you can't care about what people are gonna think, mm -hmm. but I think everybody has that. You know, we all kind of do, and yeah. that's why it's like, yeah. Hey, throw this funny picture in there just to let people know I'm okay. Yeah, just I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust I'm okay. Me. But like my I think... caption might sound like I'm a 14 year old girl at the moment, but I promise you. Bro. <laughs> but, and, and that's the thing. Like I want people to, you know, 13. when <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just like creative thoughts or just, yeah. you know, whatever. And I, I think uh, you just can't be afraid to do stuff like that. Because when, once you once you start thinking about yeah. it and you're like, oh, I've, should I post it or not? It's like, don't post it then. Because yeah. like, yeah. I've just gone so much off gut feeling and just right. like, all that. But yeah, sometimes for I, me, I think those long writings. I'm sorry, bro. I'm gonna cut you. You're good. You're good. I, I think the the real long winded kind of like, you know, really expressing myself. I think for me that comes more in the form of music. Like mm -hmm. that. That's yeah. like for me. That's that's what I use music as. Is like my journal. I don't really, I don't write too much in like a journal. But yeah. Those like, you know, moments where I sound like very like, I, I don't know, like music almost makes it less serious. Like I yeah. could be talking about the most sad, fucked up shit in the world. But if it's to a nice beat with a good melody, it's like all of a sudden it's not just some like cry for help, but it's like a message type thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, bro. Always keep it on. Keep it on. No, yeah. I feel that, too. And that's why, like, I used to do it a lot. I used I don't know. You guys probably seen it. I used to do it a lot and mm -hmm. I stopped doing it because I said, you know what? I'm saving this for the music. Like, yeah. And I think, I think that's where a lot of people go because they realize like nobody's really watching. Nobody's yeah, really nobody listening. Really cares. Nobody's really, yeah, nobody's, like, you know. they're like, they see it. They think it's like, they think about it for a little bit, yeah. especially like, but they don't feel it. Yeah. Like how when you make a song and you put it in that medium, like it, yeah. it's, it's, that's it's, what music's it, for. It it's like, why are you going to sit here and write a whole thing? People aren't going to feel it as much as yeah. when, Unless you're really good with words, there are people who are amazing poets and writers, right. and you know they can make you feel words, you know, and that's super cool. But for me, it's always been like music, and that's yeah, and doing that for other people. So. Yeah, I agree one hundred percent. Usually, I leave all that emotional stuff in the music, and it gets left there. Right. Yeah. yeah I leave all that shit in my head or in the journal. in the journal. I don't put that shit out in the into the world too much. I'm always more of a reserved, closed off kind of, you know. Well, speaking of which, speaking of being closed off and reserved, let's get back to the uh, 
the topic of networking here because we were, we were having some good conversation about that. And I, yeah. I, li- I liked where you were heading with it before yeah. we got, to, you know, kind of off topic. Right. Um, what was I saying precisely about that? What were we talking about? Oh, where you went after you had already felt like you had mastered the basics, what, right. what your next steps were in securing an audience. And I like that you guys were kind of talking about how, uh, you know, just genuinely working on your craft yeah. is, is more than enough in terms of getting yourself out there because it'll speak for itself. I think that's can't be overstated mm-hmm. how yeah. important it is to, like you were saying, dude, just perfect your craft. Like, fuck all of the attention yeah. and, and all of it, you know, yeah. and just yeah. perfect it. But I do think people are going to want something mm-hmm. to take away in the sense of like, what are things that work for you guys? Would you say beyond just being good at your craft and being genuine, you know, specifics? Like, do, <laughs> do, that, do that one more time. Yeah. One more. Welcome to ASMR cast. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. I was I'm like, your host. John Cena. He was saying something, and I was like, "What's that noise?" Yeah, <laughs> like, brother, <laughs> yeah like brother Mike's got some type of. Uh, some... Mike's feeling some type of way. Yeah. I need a sip of beer after that. Yeah, man, I'm Mike out of <laughs> Now back on schedule. What were you asking? Oh, my next steps in networking or something? I don't know. I feel like I'm still. Like, still in that process of trying to figure shit yeah. out, man. Like, well, that's what I'm asking. What has been working for you guys? You're you're in that phase right now of going. Yeah. F- it hasn't because I haven't been doing it. So for me, it's an easy answer because I haven't. Like, uh, and and I know that that sounds like whack, but yeah. like I I also like I because I did it so much in the beginning, and I thought that you know the whole grinding the social media thing was like the way. It just didn't make sense for you're on that where Gary V grind, man. Yeah, no, that's like. And dude, listen, I respect the guy. I just yeah. didn't want to. I just didn't want to do that. You know what I mean? Because it just feels so disingenuous. Right. And I mean, culture. for for him, he's very genuine about it. Yeah. So like, that's why it works for him. For me, nah. Cause cause it's like, I just wouldn't feel good about it. Also, right. social media takes a lot of mental energy out of me takes a lot of yeah you know i feel like i'm just trying to do Man's things repping of us. gotta grab that bro. fiending no. <laughs> it's like i feel fiending. like i'm just doing things then to please people and yeah. like and, and hold up this narrative right. of you know what i what somebody would and what i do is supposed to be doing and mm-hmm. it's just not true like i yeah. there are people you just don't need to do that like no if you want to, and it takes literally no energy for you to do, by all means, go for it. Just not for me. Like, I've just yeah. learned that that's not for me, and I found more success by not doing it. Because yeah. I just, you know, and, and you know, I got other jobs yeah. outside of this. So right. it's like, I, I don't have, you know, this isn't my yeah. primary source yeah. of, you know, this is my everything in terms of, you know, income. Like, Got you. And yeah. you can't, and you can't you can't always have i don't know it's hard to explain like when it comes to like what is taking most of your income it's like we have had regular jobs that have helped fund yeah. these projects and yeah. stuff like that that's it's like much how I've that's another really important gear. part yeah, yeah that's you how know. you get your gear is yeah. just by you save up your money like there's no other you know way about it and you know hopefully just by being the best that you can be and yeah. you know doing good work for other people is you know you you just are able to pay that gear off and keep doing what you do because that's why i tell you don't waste all your money on expensive gear because <laughs> i know you do a totally different thing than me but in a sense it's almost the same because yeah. It's like at some point it just becomes like it, it's like even think about a, a mechanic, right? Yeah. Or a uh, construction worker or something like that who spends all their money on all the best tools and stuff. And it's like, well, you don't need yeah. that stuff yeah. if, you know, it, it just depends. Like if you're doing it full time, yeah. maybe you want a Milwaukee or a DeWalt. If you're doing it just as like a, uh, you know, fun project, yeah. well, maybe you don't you get the need- Harbor Freight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You get the Harbor, Harbor Freight. Freight. Like it that's just how it is. And you know, and unfortunately that's why when in the last episode I know we were talking about what do you start with? Like yeah. that's why you start with the lower stuff. You start with the you're basics. Because you're not doing it full time. Right. Like there's no 
unless unless you magically can do that yeah, like and, and not just, just magically yeah. but like unless you are just able to set aside the time you have the funds available and you just find a way to get it done and yeah. I, and i respect people who can do that and do do that uh-huh but for i think for us it just wasn't that easy right yeah i know this one guy he was telling me recently he was um he wanted to um, get into like starting to produce content for social media and shit, and like he didn't have any camera gear or whatnot. And he was telling me he was like, "Yeah, man, I was gonna drop ten grand on a whole bunch of gear and what and and shit to start doing this." And I and he has no background with it at all, has no idea what he would be doing, and he was just gonna drop ten grand on a bunch of cameras, lenses, gear, and shit. And I was like, "Are you out of your mind?" Yeah, I was like, "That's like the stupidest thing you could probably ever do." Or the smartest if that's all he's gonna do. Right, and he's. He's only doing that, right? But it's uh, but the the context of the situation was uh, of how, like he's a barber, yeah. and uh, he, he wants to put out content more on social media to, to promote boost. his other business. Yeah, and uh, dropping ten grand on camera gear is just, that puts you in the red. Well, right? <laughs> yeah. it's, just, it's just like I don't know. I have to interject, and I have to say that that perfectly illustrates, I think, some of the naivety that comes with people who haven't really done much yeah. networking is. You don't realize how badly you need to know people who can n- not help you in the sense of like like you were talking about having a mentor. But this guy wants to – he owns a business. He knows what his craft is, you know? Yeah, and he wants to pick up a whole different medium and Which try is okay. And it's yeah. just like you have to understand the level of you know work and time that that's also going to take. Yeah. Now, yeah. And you have to be willing and also have that available right. time. Like right. for me, I don't have that available time. You know, I mean, and that listen, is why you yeah. network. So because if you are doing everything, if you are doing everything yourself, like oh, you're an artist, right? Mm-hmm. You're filming your own music videos. You're doing all your own production. You're doing all your own marketing. OK, if you're on that budget and that's the phase you're in and you still want to put out music videos and whatnot, cool, like more power to you. Yeah. You're a hardworking motherfucker. But for the most part, somebody in that position, he's ready to spend ten thousand dollars on gear when he could spend a fraction of that and have somebody who just, knows right. infinitely better uh, well, how to that, do it. That's the thing is, is that if, before he met me, he was like, man, I was like, like a few weeks ago, I was going to spend all this money. And then he met me and he's like, well, now I got somebody that I know that could just shoot this for me and pay like a few hundred bucks to, to yeah. shoot this content or whatever. And yeah. now, I don't, I'm, now I'm not out 10 grand trying to figure out how to use it and what to do. And, y- yeah. you know, figuring everything out yeah. from scratch. You, I have someone now that knows what to do and can yeah. just boom, set up and go. Now, you don't have to worry about it. When it comes to like networking and meeting someone who maybe is brand new to it and they're coming to you or you met them somehow, are you then willing to help them, like get them started? And because I know a lot of people, mm-hmm. we I think we touched on this maybe outside of the podcast and we talked about it before, but we talked about like, because I know with me, like people who want to get started in like a digital audio workstation right. like logic or pro tools or you know something like that like are you aren't you afraid they'll take your business well it's like how do you feel about that in terms of videography because yeah. i know i have no problem because you know the people who have taught me have been so gracious to teach me yeah. why wouldn't i do that right. for somebody else because yeah. yeah. it's like i know the enjoyment i get out of it from filming yeah and then taking f- photos and stuff like that and going to these places and seeing all this cool shit and I know how much I really enjoy that. And if I know somebody else could really enjoy that as much as I do, why would I want to take that experience away yeah. from them? Mm-hmm. And you know? if they overlap you, I mean, you really have two options then here. That's, they, well, sorry. They, no, you're good, dude. They either overlap you because they are a natural prodigy, somebody yeah. beyond, you know, beyond gifted, in which right. case, like, okay, like, what's yeah. the problem yeah. there? And like, you help they're guiding them. Or, yeah. Or they overlap you because you slacked off in the time since yeah. when you were teaching them. And in that case, you can't be mad at them if they're taking your business. Yeah. They fucking overlapped you. They and just... that also means you did a good job as a teacher and a mentor. Yeah. yeah. Teaching them. So to me, it's like really, if, if somebody, if somebody, you're worried about somebody taking your business from you teaching them and you must be not be working very hard at your business. Like, yeah. And, 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 yeah, I mean, people get so mad at stuff like that, and yeah. it's just petty it's because just the truth. yeah, and 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 it and it's petty stuff because yeah, if if you were trying hard enough, well, then you know that wouldn't happen, and also because what's to stop you from you you guys working together? You know, yeah. it's yeah. like how me like an Octavius Tyler, like right. I went to him for um a mix that I did. I yeah. think I mentioned earlier. Yeah, and. It's cool to like be able to work with people and still, you know, bounce ideas off of them. It it's 
that kind of stuff is invaluable. And when you mentor somebody to the point of where you can do that with them and, you know, that's yeah, awesome. Like that's that's what you ideally would want, you know? Like right. why why wouldn't you want to have somebody who can you can bounce ideas off of? So So would you say that's the whole goal of your guys' networking right now isn't to necessarily promote your social media to the nth degree or get the most views or anything like that or really build it like that, but more so having people around you in your network that all share similar passion, would you say you found that more important than Absolutely. any type of marketing? Yeah, because then yeah. it's like, like that's friendship. Like that's like why you guys are here. It's like that's exactly like what you just said is how this right here just happened. Yeah, like facts. this wouldn't have happened any other way. So yeah. it's proof. So proof is in the making. I think that's a great point. No, I think you guys both made a lot of really good points about marketing and where you start out. Like Nick, you talked about what it's like having a mentor and how that can end up becoming a crutch at a certain point if you're not putting in that time. So you got to mm-hmm. balance the the actual learning and, and getting help with experimentation and struggling for yourself to find how you want to do it. And you talked about how uh, you didn't really have any type of mentor right. at all to start. So for you, it's been more about how you can connect with people and actually build relationships to build projects with them. Yeah. And I think that's that's interesting that networking, you know, people say it like it's such a one-dimensional thing when they mm-hmm. talk about it, but really you both have very different ideas of, well, at least experiences as to yeah. how you got to where you're at networking. So what would you say in, in takeaway for somebody who's uh, just starting out? What should they be, what kind of network should they be looking to build? I know we talked about it a little bit, but in a few words from each of you, what, if you could start over now, what would you start doing? Who would be the people you're looking for? Either one of you. I'll let you go first. Oh, Rob. thanks. Put spotlight on now. You're good. Uh, I just know my answer. I know. I don't know. I got. That's like a. It's that's a difficult question because, like, from when I started till now, it's like different what I'm trying to do now than I was back then. Like back then, it was just oh, I'm gonna go hard with these music videos, and that's the whole thing that I want to do and build this whole production company and have this big giant thing eventually. And now I'm more like, okay, I still like doing this music video thing, but I'm starting to get more in, like into photography and doing that, and I want to do more weddings and stuff like that. Gotcha. So it's like I'm trying to do both at the same time yeah. and expand both of them. So it's like a lot of shit to Yeah, do. Dude, I can only imagine. And then like for me, it's just like I never try to force a relationship or yeah. you know, network. Like it, Like when I network, it just happens. Like yeah, it I just don't, happens. I don't ever try to force it. That's just, and I, I know that that's probably happened for you too a ton because it's just like, you know, you share what it is you've been doing because it makes you excited and, mm-hmm. and then other people, you know, they, they think it's cool and they want to hop on board. So, yeah, I think that's a cool way to go about it. Let's go. Boy, you fuck. You shit out of luck. You should grab your dutch and double up. Heard that you been poor and even Still she ain't getting a band I got a 